We're going to configure PPTP VPN using the Buffalo routers that are on the DDWRT firmware today. So I'm going to first hop into the router's IP or the gateway IP address of my router that I want to configure it on, uh, which in my case is 192.168.1.2. Uh, yours may vary. It is also po probable that it's 192.168.11.1. Um, you do not need to have the Buffalo router configured as a DHCP server or acting as a router. It could just be an access point. Um, any Buffalo DDWRT access point or router can run as a PPTP VPN server. So you'll notice because I have it as an access point, it does not contain my WAN IP address, which is up at the top. Uh, we'll need that later. Uh, what we want to do first is go to services. And that'll have us log in. Just log into your router and then we're going to go to VPN. Here is where you'll have PPTP server. Uh, we're going to go ahead and enable that. Broadcast support you can leave disabled. Uh, to enable it is only going to assist in possibility of being able to play some video games across the VPN that require broadcasting uh, such as maybe some Blizzard made games broadcast on the 255 IP, so you'd want to have broadcast support enabled should you be hosting games in that way. Uh, MPPE, MPPE encryption, we're going to leave enabled. It's going to be using that encryption protocol to encrypt traffic going across our VPN tunnel. Uh, and then DNS, you can input DNS that can be specified manually on the remote network, or you can specify it if they, if somebody does possibly intend to use this as the gate, remote gateway to access the internet. So I've gone ahead and just plugged in Google's free open one. Uh, you can plug in, if you know some DNS servers, you can add them here. I'm going to set the MTU and MRU to the defaults. Uh, we want this available. This is going to be the, the port in which it comes through. Uh, we're going to allow PPTP pass through in our security configuration in a moment. Uh, the server IP is going to be the server on which you're going to have the VPN server running. Uh, in this case, it's going to be 192.168.1.2. In your case, it might be 11.1 .1 or whatever you have your gateway configured as. So then we're also going to set the client IP. This is going to be the IP range that you want to DHCP to a client that is going to be connecting to your VPN. So you don't want to set it to the same possibly as the as maybe your wireless connections or your LAN wired connections. So in my case, I have my wireless start giving DHCP addresses at the 150 to 199 range, and I have normal LAN be from 192.168.100 to 149. So in this case, I'm going to make mine start at 192.168.1.200, and this is going to allow up to 64. So if I was going to allow 64, then I might just set it to, uh, I guess in this case, it doesn't have 64 left. So I would set it to 254. And I only have 54 available, so I'll set it to allow 54 addresses. You could start this earlier. I could set it to go from maybe 10 all the way to 190. Um, and if I'm only allowing 54, it'll only go up in this case to 64, uh, or if I had 64, then it will uh, allow it to go up to, um, what is it going to be, 74 as the IP. So we can set that however you need it to be. Uh, you're just going to use 192.168.1 dot and then your range and a hyphen and then the last IP that you want it to serve. Authentication method, we're going to use local. Uh, chat. We're not. I don't, I don't have a radius server. If you have a radius server, you'll have that info. You can go ahead and plug it in now. We're going to use local user management chat secrets. The way that this is configured is you want to have your username, which I'll just do Buffalo test. Then you do a space asterisk space and then the password. Password obviously case sensitive, uh, being as it's a VPN to your local network. I recommend making this very strong. So we'll go ahead and use lowercase, uppercase, and symbols and numbers. So I'll do test buffalo 29. And now after we do the password, we're going to hit space asterisk one more time and carriage return or enter. This is going to drop us down. We now have a username of buffalo test with a password of test uh, pound 
Buffalo 2 at 9. So we could create additional users. You can have as many users as you want to create here. I could make uh, test user 2 and password something like this and same thing. We have its user space asterisk space password space asterisk and then I just hit a carriage return. So that's all we have to do to configure this portion of our PPTP server so we can just scroll to the bottom we can save that configuration and we can apply that configuration. I'm not going to hit apply now as that'll take about 30 seconds to come back up but you can just hit apply settings it will apply them and that portion will be available we do need to check your security so I'm going to go over to security now and I'm going to look at VPN pass through second tab here and we just want to make sure that we have PPTP pass through enabled um, this doesn't so much need to be enabled on this as it does your gateway so because I am not using my general router as my PPTP PPTP server currently, then I need to, on my, that router, allow PPTP pass through and direct it to the IP of my server. So I am, this is going to be configured if you're using your router as your main router that's giving out all your IP addresses and handling your routing, then just have this enabled, save, apply, and you are set. You are now available to create a connection. So we're going to go through how to create a connection. Uh, I'm using Windows 8. This, uh, this configuration method is the same for Windows Vista and Windows 7. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that now. Easiest way to get to it is to right click on your connection properties and do open network and sharing center. It's going to open you up to here which is exactly where you need to be for set up a new connection or network and we're going to uh, connect to workplace or VPN hit next and I'm going to use my uh, create a new connection and we're going to do it using the internet connection that we currently are using so you can't connect to your own internal VPN that as you're configuring it but you maybe on your laptop or uh, your, your mobile phone or your maybe a, a workstation or a computer that's outside of your your home then or your workplace if you're doing setting set for workplace then you would do this configuration on that system so we're going to use that connection as the VPN tunnel and you just need to enter your WAN IP so you can go to Google and type what is my IP or alternately if you're using your router your WAN IP will be listed right here you're just going to input whatever it shows there so in this case I have this isn't going to connect but it wouldn't work anyways I'm going to LAN and I'll put 0000, 000, 000 and destination name this is whatever you want to call it this is just a reference so you know what you're to what you're connecting uh, maybe to home or to work Austin and so that way I can know okay that's where I'm going uh, remember credentials up to you uh, if it's not a secure computer that you always have access to you might not want to remember those credentials otherwise the first time you input them uh, they'll be stored for anybody else to happy-go-lucky decide to connect to your tunnel um, we do not want to allow other people to use this connection um, this would only be applicable this is you're welcome to use these security settings how you want but uh, I would only use this if maybe it's only you and a and a relative or somebody you really trust you want to have that connection as well um, so we'll do remember credentials on this case and I'm gonna create this connection uh, Windows 8 it's gonna pop this up like hey go connect to it uh, we're not ready to connect to it yet we need to do a little more configuration and because this doesn't pop up in Windows 7 uh, or Vista I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to configure it the rest of the way this way so we'll go to back to our network and sharing center and we're gonna do change adapter settings here is gonna give you any connections you've created. Uh, you'll notice that with my the one I created here it's showing WAN mini port IKE V2. Um, we need to right click on this and go to properties. We need to change that in the security settings to point to point tunneling protocol. We're going to do PPTP. Now it's set to automatic. Um, I like to just set it to PPTP as I know the connection to our server is that. So this is going to immediately connect. It doesn't have to try any other protocols. Um, in Windows 8, it does not automatically use the uh, login protocols. You have to allow these protocols. I believe in Vista and 7, it does already default, say, allow 
MSV chat, uh, MS chat v2. So we want to use the default setting after we allow it. Um, and if it's not allowed, or if it's not showing this in Vista 7, I rec you need to allow these protocols as well. And then we'll go to networking. Here I generally uncheck IPv6 as I'm 100% certain it's never going to get an address. I don't even want it to bother trying. Uh, and I'm going to open up IPv4 settings. Um, if you, I set mine to automatically do it. Uh, so that way if I'm on a laptop and I hop out, I don't need to, this to always pull the same IP in my home network. Um, I've already set a range and it can just hop into anything in that range. Uh, you can force DNS on here. I could force it here or I can allow my server, which I've already configured, to push that DNS, uh, which is going to be 8.8.8.8.8.8. I'm going to hit advanced and go and uncheck use default gateway network. Uh, the reason I do this is if I'm connecting outward, I want to use my current connections gateway to route to the net. Um, you don't have to. I just don't want all my traffic to having to go through the VPN and then out. I'd rather just do it when I want to use a web browser. Um, however, if you want it to all route through there, maybe you're trying to force the remote gateway so that way uh, you have too much of a, wherever you are, there's a heavy firewall in place and you want to use your, your home to route through, then you would want to use this remote gateway. So I'm going to uncheck it. You can use that however you need and hit OK and OK and OK. Now it's connected. You'll notice it shows WAN mini port PPTP here and you can just double click on it here um, or in Windows 7 Vista or 8, you can just select it here and it'll show a list that'll pop up in Vista and 7. Here it's pulling up a large bar. Um, I I'm, can't connect to the one on my network I just configured, being as uh, it it'll, can't do that kind of a loop. However, um, I've got some others created using Buffalo products as well. Um, this one I have created and does not have username and password. The very first time you go to connect to it, you have to input a username and password. It's just going to be the same username and password that we configured earlier. So I'll hop back uh, into my configuration, which is services, VPN, and we have my usernames and passwords. Uh, again, it's not going to be for this portion, but if you don't remember what they were, you would use the same one, test user2 and password92$3. You would hit connect and it'll connect. I'm going to go ahead and connect to one. This is what will happen once you connect. It's going to verify the credentials. It's going to create it. Your adapter is going to become available. To verify uh, that you're pulling a proper IP address off of there, you can open a command prompt and run ipconfig. Uh, alternately, you can right click on the connection, do status and details, and it's going to go ahead and show you what IP address you've pulled on that remote network, what DNS you've pulled on the network, and how your connection is being handled. Um, that is all that you have to do to get connected. Uh, you'll now be able to ping things on the other side of the network that aren't on my networks 192.168.1. Uh, something it's class C I can do a dot seven dot thirty three and I should get a response across my VPN as soon as I close the tunnel I'll show you how that works um, to disconnect from it again you can just click down here click on your connection and say disconnect you'll notice now that I've disconnected from it the ping is no longer being accepted uh, it's going to time out because I don't have a connection to that network anymore that's all you have to do. If you have any questions or comments, just let us know in the comments. Thanks.